Last week, I released my review of the Lone Star gear set, the new gear set available in patch 1.2, calling it the best new gear set, something I absolutely stand by. Today, I'm gonna give you a build to make the most of this awesome, awesome gear set. Stick around. Guys, hello and welcome back. It's Skill Up here with another Division video. Today, we're gonna to be taking another look at the Lone Star gear set. I released my review of that last week and a lot of people were really skeptical about the kind of stuff that I was saying. I called it the best new gear set. Um, and a lot of people were like, this set is garbage. There is no way it's gonna increase your TPS. Um, you know, you, you couldn't possibly stay out of cover long enough to achieve any sort of increased DPS from this set. It's trash tier, et cetera, et cetera. So today I wanna to just show you that set in action. So you really get a sense for just how powerful this set can be. And I also wanna give you a really detailed build to make the most out of it so that you can use it to its maximum effectiveness. Guys, as always, I put a huge amount of work into this video. So if you do like it, please drop a like as it does help grow my channel. And if you're not yet a subscriber, hit that subscribe button now for the best source of division theory crafting you will find anywhere on the intertubes. So the Lone Star gear set, what is the deal. Well, for those of you that haven't watched my video on the subject, you can go and check that out now if you like. But the long story short is that it's a new gear set available in patch 1.2. You get it pretty quickly. If you're doing any of the high value target missions, you'll find that you'll get mainly Lone Star gear set pieces. And you can also buy some blueprints from the base of operations. And you'll very quickly find yourself in a position where you have four piece. So don't worry too much about that. They come pretty thick and fast. In terms of the set bonuses that you get, the two piece bonus gives you um, tons and tons of ammo. So basically, basically increases your ammo percentage by 100%. But the thing is this actually works multiplicatively. So it takes your base ammo and then you add on say your chest bonus because you know chest pieces gives you give you bonus ammo. Backpacks give you bonus ammo as well. And then it multiplies all of that by 100%. So you're actually getting just a really crazy, crazy amount of ammo if you're using this thing um, with in conjunction with a chest and a backpack. So it's super, super effective from that perspective. The three piece bonus gives you an extra thousand damage to a shotgun and to an LMG. Now to an LMG, I've already said that this is pretty useless because LMGs are really so far behind in DPS that even this extra damage doesn't help them in the slightest. For a shotgun though, it's a nice to have. And you know, if you if you know how to use a shotgun, then fantastic, it's gonna be extra damage for you. But if you're not too comfortable with them or you have a bit of trouble aiming them say on a console or whatever then it's probably not going to make it any easier for you so uh, yeah it's a bit of a nice to have but it's certainly not going to change your world the four piece bonus however will change your world and what that is is that uh, every time you holster your weapon it automatically reloads it okay so um this sounds cool and it sounds like a nice quality of life change but the fact is this is actually a really huge dps increase because when you don't need to reload you are spending more time firing more time firing equals more dps so you're not dealing more damage per bullets, but because you are firing more, you are doing more total damage. Now in my detailed review of the set, I made really clear that on certain weapon types, this can be really awesome. So for an M1A, for instance, you can actually get up to 50% more damage if you're using two M1As, something I wouldn't actually recommend, but hey, that's just the, the theory craft. That's what the numbers say. What is really useful though, is if you start using things like an SMG and an assault rifle in conjunction with each other, because it means that you never actually need to reload these weapons and you can continue switching back and forward between them, dealing constant damage while you're doing that. Now in the gameplay that you're seeing here, I'm basically showing you just some highlights of uh, you know instances where I've been able to execute that really effectively. And this is a mix of different types of missions and the like, but here you're seeing that I'm basically just constantly firing. I am never reloading. I never have to stop. I'm just switching back and forward between weapons, dealing constant damage. And this essentially what is what makes this gear set so incredible because I never need to stop dealing damage. And yes, I'm not getting bonus damage like I am with Century's Call or Strikers, for instance, and I'm not putting a bleed on the target like I am with Predator's Mark, but none of that matters because I'm dealing so much damage because I'm constantly firing. It's, it's enabling me to maintain constant throughput in a way that none of the other gear sets could do. Now, a lot of people have said that there's no way that you could use this set in like a challenge mode scenario or in the dark zone, you know, because you just, you need to take cover. You can't just stand up and keep shooting things. And I really, I get that. And that's partly true, but it's also partly not in a really big way. And you're seeing some clips here of me in challenge mode, just basically doing exactly the same thing as I did in hard mode. And yeah, I need to be careful about how I play and need to watch my health, etc. But you're seeing that I am consistently just out there in front of enemies 
firing away, dealing huge amounts of damage in a way that no other set would let me deal damage in that way. No other set, you know? So um, for that reason, yes, it absolutely is viable in challenge modes. Um, it absolutely is viable in the dark zone, but there are some prerequisites that you need to be aware of in order to make sure that you're not falling over whenever you try and do that. So first of all, let's talk weapon types. So personally, I'm really in favor of an SMG assault rifle combo. You could absolutely go two SMGs or two assault rifles, but obviously the challenge there becomes that you have uh, less ammo to work with. Um, you, you get huge reserves from the two piece, but even then, if you're using two of the same type of weapon, you're still going to burn through ammo fairly quickly. So I think going for two types of weapons or two different weapons is probably the best way to start. In terms of which weapons that you'd go for, I'd personally choose an SMG and an assault rifle. Uh, reason being one, SMGs are the highest potential dealing sort of DPS potential weapons in the game right now, so long as you use them in their optimal range, which is about 15 meters. So anything that's nice and close, I'm generally using my SMG. And you can see here and I'm using an, an org, generally speaking, like most people are. Um, however, if you know, when it comes to longer range targets, the, your, your only other option really is a marksman rifle, but it doesn't really work in this kind of play style, this very run and gun up in your face of enemies kind of play style. So for that reason, I really prefer an assault rifle as my go to option for longer range engagements. You can see here I'm using an LVOA dash C, but any assault rifle will do anything, you know, anything you can get your hands on because they really have um, much better range to work with, making that ability for sort of giving you that ability to switch back and forward for whatever weapon you need based upon the distance to the target. So this is very much a run and gun sort of get up in your face style of uh, play. So I would really strongly recommend you stacking firearms and stamina for this as opposed to say uh, electronics. So I'm a big fan of electronics builds actually what I, that's generally what I run. However, an electronics build is very dependent upon you utilizing smart cover and you're not going to be utilizing smart cover all that much with this build. You're going to be sort of running out to your enemies, going to meet them, knocking them down ASAP, then switching straight to the next one. Cover is probably not going to be utilized as much as you would if you were using a different type of build. Part and parcel with that is a is a very strong need to maximize your toughness. Uh, now, I'm going to do videos on toughness in the future in terms of how to maximize that. But long story short, make sure you max out your armor. Armor is super duper effective when it comes to increasing your toughness. And it only gets more effective the more you stack on. So if you have like 65% armor and then you're going to 70% armor, that's going to give you, you know, X amount of toughness. But if you go 70% uh, armor to 75% armor, it's going to give you even more toughness than that first 5% did. It does not scale in a linear fashion, it scales in an exponential fashion. So that's why that stacking your armor as high as possible, getting right to that 75% cap is really important and it really works for this this, uh, this build. In terms of the abilities that you would bring, absolutely recommend first aid uh, with overdose. You are going to be taking a lot of damage and uh, you're going to get, you know, you're going to be running low a lot because you're going to be sort of up in the face of enemies and all of a sudden you know a few of them will look at you and bam your health will drop so you need to be ready to top yourself off you can't uh, you can't rely on anyone else to do that um, and similarly I'd really recommend pulse pulse is a huge damage increase it also highlights your target so you know where they are uh, you know the other sort of DPS increasing option is something like uh, smart cover but as I've said it's not great for smart cover because you're going to be moving around a lot outside of cover in the face of your enemies and then things like you know sticky bomb or seeker mines because you're not stacking electronics are not going to be effective so Pulse is absolutely, I think, the best option for you to run here, um, giving you maximum flexibility. It's also worth noting that you should definitely be using the uh, signature, your, you know, the survival link signature skill. Again, you will be dropping quite low. You'll find yourself in some hairy situations. And, uh, you know, having that, having that uh, as a bit of a backup, a bit of a whole oh shit kind of button that you can hit when you need to is very helpful. Now, there are four talents that are really important to use when you're using this build. Not doing so, I think, will really hurt you. And a lot of people don't actually pay attention to their talents. So make sure you pay attention to these. The first one is critical save. Use a med kit during low health to increase damage resistance by 40% for 10 seconds. As I mentioned, you will absolutely be running low quite often when you're running this build. So that extra resistance when you pop a med kit at low health is super helpful. And low health, by the way, is the is your, um, you know, your lowest third of health. When you get into that final bar of health, that's what the game considers low health. That's when you can pop a med kit and get benefit out of this talent. The second one is strike back, which is very similar to what I mentioned before. Reach low health to, re to reduce active skill cooldowns by 20%. Again, you're going to be running low. You're going to be wanting to use your pulse and your heal as much as possible. So when you do get low,
although this you know reduces the cooldown timer very helpful to you with this playstyle the third one is on the move a talent that doesn't really see much use kill a hostile while moving to reduce incoming damage by 30 percent for 10 seconds you will very often be moving with this build you know very commonly you're up front you're trying to like take out one target then chase down the next very very common so i found that this talent has been hugely beneficial for me in terms of my overall survivability and i'd really strongly recommend you take it as well and the final talent is one is none now this talent is bugged at the moment still it actually uh, jams your weapon if you reload at the exact same second that the um, ability is, is uh, procking however you don't have to reload with this gear set so it's completely a-okay fine for you and as i've said in a previous video one is none is by far and away the best and most effective dps increasing talent in the game never leave home without it even if it is bugged right now because as i said for you using lone star you don't have to worry about that reload jamming now i've said earlier that uh you know assault rifle smg is uh, my my preference for this but absolutely you can use any weapon you like and one really interesting option would be using a shotgun uh i'm going to do a more specific shotgun focus build in the future but yeah shotguns are really viable with this if you like that kind of play style you might want to use an assault rifle for something you know longer range and then assault rifle uh, a, a shotgun for something up closer totally up to you and the fact that you get that extra thousand damage out of that given the three piece bonus is also really a help is also really effective so guys that's it that's lone star that's that's that in action now again i'm sure a lot of you still don't believe me that this is really good but Gary, I promise you, this is the highest DPS set that is available to you right now outside of Sentry's Call. I have tested Predators, the Predators Mark. It is nowhere near as effective as everyone had hoped it would be. Striker's Battle Gear is too punishing when you miss targets. Uh, and, you know, all the other gear sets don't provide that, uh, that, that bigger D DPS increase. So, you know, Lone Star is massive. And if you haven't tried it, I really recommend trying it out because it's not until you actually have a go with it with it that you really understand just how much throughput it provides you and how much extra dps you're pushing out of it so uh yeah i'm sure you'll have a set of it very quickly if you're doing those high value target missions whack it on give it a run and uh and let me know what you think in the comments below because i'd really like to hear your feedback guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to drop a like and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe now that would be fantastic uh i'm going to continue to pump out plenty of videos covering all the stuff that's emerged from 1.2 and obviously heaps of news as we get closer to e3 2016 which I am going to. I'm super excited about that. I'm going to be meeting directly with the developers talking about what's going to be coming up in the game. Cannot wait. So uh, if you like that information as well, make sure you subscribe, stick around for that. Guys, again, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the dark soon. Bye-bye.